What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys had a great week out there. That's right. It is time for our Friday Fang Stock Recap Show, where we recap all the Fang Stocks plus Microsoft and Tesla, and then we jump over to the stock chart. I think you really want to hang around for this because, as you know, we had some big candles show up this week, some big price action. These stocks have pulled back into zones, which historically have been buying opportunities, not over the last week, not over the last month, but for like almost half a year, six months, these stocks many of them are approaching buying areas. So I think you're going to want to stick around to that because you could make some notes and potentially be buying some of these stocks as soon as next week. Let's kick things off with the news. Let's start with Facebook. Started the week at about 260 bucks. It swung around, but ended the week almost flat at 257. Obviously, Facebook has been in this news because of this Australian law that was passed that basically required Facebook and Google to to pay publishers for news that appeared on its platform. Facebook's, uh, you know, shut down the thing. They kind of pushed back against it pretty hard. And what I have always said on this show is that it really, Australia doesn't really matter from an economic perspective for, to Facebook and Google. It's a small country. It's small in terms of revenues when we're talking about companies the size of Facebook and Google. But what it was going to do, it was going to trigger other governments around the world to realize, oh, Oh, maybe we can do this too. And we'll have another example of that when we get to the Google news as well. So what Facebook is doing, which I think is a smart thing, is they're getting out in front of this and they're starting to talk with Canadian news outlets about licensing different news content to appear on Facebook. So they're getting out in front of it. And I think this is the better path than allow the government to tell you what to do. You get out there and you create your own deals. And it appears that is what Facebook is trying to do. And I think that's probably the right move. Moving on to Apple, start of the week at 128. This one slid down the tracks just a little bit. We'll get over the stock chart. We'll see what's going on with this one. End of the week at about $121 per share. Now, Apple had a shareholder meeting earlier in the week. Not a lot of news coming out of it, especially from the product side or anything like that. Obviously, Apple releases most of their products towards the end of the year in, in, in Q4. But they did announce that you will see annual dividend increases. I think we knew that, but they said that they don't think dividends are the only way for Apple's to create shareholder value. One other way that they've been creating a lot of value is just doing a big old buyback of the shares. I don't have a chart up here, but Apple has bought back just billions and billions of dollars worth of the stock. One of the reasons why they do that is they awarded Tim Cook a one, just a $1 million in new shares if the company hits certain milestones. And so what's Tim Cook going to do that? Well, he's going to sell his shares into a buyback that the company executes. So whether or not he ends up doing that, I'll just tell you, give you a hint. Most executives, that's why they do buybacks. Moving on to Amazon. Start of the week at 3211, slid down to about 3100. This one is inching into an area of a buying opportunities. Now, I did with some of these stocks. My sons have just had birthdays. And so without COVID and birthday, they haven't been, uh, you know, birthday parties and things like that. They haven't been able to get toys. So I, I, I they've gotten a lot of money. And so I took this week to kind of inch into these stocks. When we get over to the stock charts, I'll show you that, man, we could be approaching some really, really good areas with this these stocks and Amazon in particular as well. Now, some news for Amazon. Minimum wage doesn't look like, it actually can't be a part of the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill that is heading for the Senate. I believe this passed out of the House. Don't quote me on that one, but I think it, it is or it's likely to head out of the House and onto the Senate. What happens to this bill when it gets to the Senate is anybody's guess. Uh, I don't like to per try to uh, predict what's going to go on in Washington, especially uh, these days. But part of that is we are not going to see the $15 an hour minimum wage increase. It was going to be phased in over several years. Now, I believe off the top of my head, I believe what is true about Amazon is I believe they already have a $15 an hour minimum wage. And so you'd wonder why this would impact Amazon. Well, that would make everybody else pay $15 an hour too. So one of two things would need to happen with Amazon is to acquire more workers. And Amazon has hundreds of thousands of workers. 
Well, instead of making $15 an hour working for Amazon, I could go work at a department store, a golf course, or Jamba Juice, or whatever it is. You know, what makes working at Amazon as attractive is they do have this $15 an hour minimum wage, and that is attractive, in, certainly in certain parts of the United States. And so the fact that it's not going to be in the bill will give Amazon a competitive advantage going forward. And then also in this, I think was $1,400 stimulus checks, whether or not those get sent out or not would likely benefit or absolutely would benefit Amazon. Now, here's a, another interesting move. Amazon is likely going to partner with Dish Network, which owns a ton of spectrum here in the United States, but I think they just lease it off to, to other companies and things like that. Boost Mobile founder says that Amazon is likely to partner with them to bring a mobile service. I think they're going to start testing the serv a service in Europe and that there's chatter that they'll eventually bring that here to the United States. The rumor that I've seen not mentioned here is that Am what Amazon wants to do is bundle more things into Amazon Prime. So think you've got an Amazon Prime membership and now all of a sudden you've got your cell phone service tied to it. So we'll see if Amazon is able to execute on that, see if they can make that economically feasible. But the more things that they can bolt on to Amazon Prime would bring in more Prime members, more Prime members tend to buy more stuff on Amazon. Moving on to Netflix start of the week. This is like the safe trade. You want a safe trade in Fang? Buy, buy Netflix. Okay. Start of the week at 535. End of the week up just marginally to 538. Not a, lo not a lot of news coming out of Netflix. I think the takeaway though is when you look at Peloton, you look at Zoom Video, there was, I mean, there's numerous other stocks that I could run down that have just been rip roaring to the upside because they were kind of the stay at home trade. And Netflix was kind of grouped up in that. Well, I think what we're seeing is Netflix stock is holding up far better than any of those stocks. We're seeing Netflix is stay at home. Netflix is not stay at home. Netflix is a part of life. And it, in my opinion, probably a stock worth buying, uh, worth buying or owning. Neither of one I have done so far. We'll see if it's pulled back into a zone where we could potentially do that here in a minute. Moving on to a Google start of the week at 2062, end of the week at 2022, a bunch of twos there on the board for a Google, the U.S. Dual, U.S government is opening the door to a global digital tax agreement. So in France, they impose this 3% levy on digital revenues of companies like Google and Apple and Facebook and Amazon. And the previous administration withdrew talks over a digital tax in June, but Google donated a bunch of money to the Joe Biden administration. And what is one of the first things that they do? His treasury sec secretary opens the door door for a digital tax. So whether or not these companies make the right moves uh, on the politician side, I don't know, but I know a digital tax would likely not be beneficial to any of these companies. Microsoft is joining EU publishers pushing for paid content laws in latest shot at Google. Microsoft, Microsoft's like that, that kid on the playground that's just like teasing the other kids to go pick on somebody. And I think Microsoft is doing that. So they're going to all these, because they know that Bing is such an in, uh, consequential, uh, you know, amount of their business. And so they're just like, oh yeah, you know, other news publishers should push, uh, you know, Google and Facebook to have to pay you for news and, and do all this stuff. And so I like what Microsoft is doing. They're playing kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting character in all this. And we'll see if it works. My guess is like Facebook, Google will get out in front of this and start to partner with people. Will it cost them a little bit of money? Yeah, but will it be consequential to the business? I would guess probably not. Moving on to Microsoft, start of the week at $236, slid up and down, kind of choppy trade, but ended the week at about $232. Outside the news with uh, Google kind of pressuring governments to, to make Google pay up for news, not a lot of news out of Microsoft. But when we get over the stock chart, interesting spot where it's at. Moving on to Tesla, started the week higher, 760, slid as low as about 620, and ended the week at about 675. Tesla, as you can imagine, is pulling into zones where it could potentially be a buy, although when we get over the stock chart, we'll take a look at that a little, a little bit 
further detail. Tesla shares are now below the high it hit ahead of its S&P 500 entry. So that's a little bit of news. But really, this other one is uh, Elon Musk tweets that the Fremont a plant here in California has started and is back online. So they closed the plant, I think for a day or two and is because of, I believe chip shortages. They say part shortages here, but I believe that there is just a chip shortage. We've seen this with Ford and GM and Tesla's not immune to it as well. We're seeing this shortage of chips and it, uh, you know, it forced Tesla to kind of close their plant for two days in terms of making cars. Now, ARK Invest bought more Tesla amid the stumble in electric vehicle stocks. So ARK Invest, if you're really studying what they've been buying over the, buying and selling over the last week, they've been getting out of names that are not their core holdings, and they've been loading up on stocks like Tesla, Teladoc, and a couple other names that they just absolutely are, have fallen in love with. And that was actually telegraphed by Kathy Wood in an interview. She said in any kind of sell-off event, we would sell off the names that we're just kind of holding. Like they held Apple and Amazon and a couple other, I think, uh, Salesforce.com. And they held them in the portfolio. But the minute they started going down, boy, they cut bait with them and then went back right back to their high conviction plays, which is Tesla. So that just shows you that the more Tesla goes down, the more this ETF, which is one of the largest on Wall Street at the current time, well, they'll step in and buy Tesla. So we'll see when we get over the stock chart if that has helped Tesla shares. Moving on to the are we going to buy these stocks this next week? We'll see what happens. So let's start things off with Facebook. This has pulled into the lower end of our range, which is held since last August. August. So we're talking almost six months now, but actually probably almost exactly over six months. It is held this $247 level three different times. Once here in August, again in, I guess that's September, and then again in early January. And it appears this stock wants to come down this way. Now, whether or not it gets that, it's about $10 from its share price right now. I have the lower end of the range at $247. Right now, Facebook, it is at $257. If you do not want to pinch pennies and you believe this lower end of this band, like sideways consolidation we've been in for about six months, will hold, this could be a potential buy for you at some point next week because I would guess we either retest this 247 zone or we resume some kind of uh, you know uptrend back up in to the 260 range. You could also trade this if you want. There's options plays there as well. I just think technically this is setting up for a bounce, especially the closer we get to 247. Now, a break of 247 and look, this thing could come down into the 230s. And so that's just something that you want to keep in mind when we look at the, these are not like cement lines in the sand. When they get breached, they basically crumble and then all of a sudden they'll act as resistance on the way back up. Now, moving on to Apple is almost sitting exactly on a trend line that we've had marked out for a long period of time, really since again, August of last year, 119, 120 has been a key area for Apple shares. It has bounced off here and kind of acted as resistance several times over the last six months. And here we are with Apple sitting right at $121 per share. So we're about a dollar away from 120. If you're like me, you got two sons and they've got a couple bucks in their, their accounts. I'll throw some money at Apple at this level. Since I'm overweight Apple in my retirement account, the level I am looking for is actually below 120, a break below 120. And we're probably, you know, we're probably looking at 115, 112, somewhere in that range. Below that is like 109, 108. That would be an area where I would probably move in pretty heavily. And in my case, in a retirement account where you only get $6,000 a year, you're probably looking at four, five, six, maybe even seven shares down in this range. I might even sell some other stocks to make room for something like that. Now, moving on to Amazon, also just drifting right into a zone. We're not in the lower end of the zone like we are with Facebook. The lower end of the zone is between $2,900 and 
3000 Right now, we're sitting about $90 higher than that at about thirty ninety. But we are in kind of a, what I would call a secondary zone that is held several times since, again, about... August or September of last year. And so this area between 3000 and 3100 where Amazon is at, if you don't have any exposure to Amazon and you have the ability to buy fractional shares, not a terrible spot to buy Amazon, especially if we do get those $1,400 stimulus checks. A lot of those obviously are going to flow into Amazon. Moving on to Netflix. This one just hung right on our trend line here, right at about $540 per share currently trading just slightly under that you could probably I, I usually do these trend line kind of round numbers so you can remember these figures very easily but we have a 50-day moving average that it's kind of converging against that's right at 535 it's like a couple bucks under where it's at so I'd act, I'd anticipate that acting as support if for some reason Netflix sells off next week we could have a pretty you know deep pullback back into the 510 range my opinion anywhere from 490 up to 510 probably a buying opportunity for Netflix even lower than that say we just get a really bad week next week just kind of like what we had this week all the way down at 470 the other thing you could do is play for a bounce here at 540 and play a bounce up to 560 you could put your stop loss right at the 50 day moving average so you could set a five dollar stop loss for potentially what's that 25 even 30 dollars in upside so depending on how you want to play this you could play this as a potential trade setup with Netflix. Moving on to Microsoft. I skipped Google. I'll put do Google next, but we'll move on to Microsoft. So Microsoft kind of made this rounding top and we saw up here, the stock topped out at 244, got completely rejected, but found really solid support right here at 230. The stock's trading at 232. Really what I'm looking for in Microsoft is can we break 230? We kind of wicked through it. You break 230, you're down here at 225, you break 225. Boy, breaking 225, if you're like me, you want to go long Microsoft and you want to go long in kind of a major way, you actually kind of want to see it break 225. You break 225 and the odds are high that you probably get down here to 219. Okay, that's about, uh, you know, $10, $15 where we're at on the stock right now. Now, if it doesn't do that... More, I think a higher probability is this stock has found resistance at 230 and it'll sideways consolidate between 230 and 240. If you want to accumulate the shares at, at, at that point, that is fine with me. The stock pays a dividend. And if you watch our videos on Microsoft, the fundamentals are basically out of this world. Moving on to Google. Sorry, we kind of skipped the, the G and Fang, but we looped back around it. This one also just tagged our lower end of the support line here. At 2012, okay, it's the stock sitting about $10 higher than that at 2022. What it does at this point, I don't know, okay? The, the, it's just hanging out. This is not necessarily an area where I'd want to like just run out and buy this one. It's not like a Facebook that's kind of pulling deep into a zone or maybe even like an Apple or an Amazon. This one's just kind of chilling out here at the upper end of range. You break this 212 range. And there's a big gap here. And this one could come down to about 1919. Now, if it holds this 212, your upside is back up to the all-time highs of about 2120. So you've got about a hundred dollars in upside. The way you could play this if you want to trade this or you want to set up an option strategy or something like that, yeah, you could play this to go to hit support here right where it's at right now, right at about 2020 and pop up a hundred dollars to 21 to, uh, you know, back up to 2120 and put your stop loss pretty tight underneath here. Maybe at like 1992 or so, because if it breaks 1992 or, or right around 2000 per share, then the odds are pretty high that it's coming down here to 1919. So there are some setups with Google. I'm not, I'm already long this name. I'm just kind of like watching it. We'll see what happens with Google. Finally, a Tesla, probably the most interesting chart that we have going on here. Tesla's stuck in a pretty well-defined downtrend. Now, it's done that before. It's been in these downtrends before, and it tends to want to consolidate afterwards and kind of resume an uptrend. Now, it's in an intermediate box here, just a really tiny box here between about $650 per share up to about $700 per share. It's sitting right in the middle of that at about $670 per share. 
Personally, I'm kind of waiting on this one. We can bounce here at 650 and then come back up to seven. That's basically we've what we've done over the last couple trading days is we've kind of just bounced around in this range. Now, a break of 650 and this one's coming back down into this consolidation zone between 537 up to about six, we'll call that 650 or so. So a much wider zone. We'll see if Tesla is able to do that. Now, if it finds its footing here, right at about 650, $670 per share and bounces and then bounces above this downtrend, and gets momentum. Well, look, it's back up to the upside. It's probably coming back up here to the 750, 77, 775 range. You could trade this if you want to. You could set this up for a long position. I think we're still kind of in a monitoring pattern with all, most of these stocks. I think Facebook is in the clearest form here where it is, you know, it, Facebook is basically $10 away, which at a $257 stock is, is just a couple of percentage point away from a, you know, a six month support level that is held for six months now. So, Facebook, in my opinion, is the one I would put on the top of the watch list. Apple is a very short second, and Amazon is shortly after that as well. They all have their pluses and minuses. We'll see what happens going into next week. Maybe let me know in the comments below what you are thinking with these ones. That concludes our Friday recap show. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. We'll be back again soon. Good luck with your investments.